<laughs> so, this is what greeted us at the Bahrain International Circuit for the launch of the 2020 Ducati Panigale V4S. But it didn't stop us having a right old time with it. The Panigale is not entirely new for 2020, but there's enough of a change that Ducati saw it fit to fly us halfway around the world to sample it in the Middle East. We're going to do this video a little different as we wanted to show you exactly what goes on at an international press ride. We'll also be talking to a couple of key people who make this Panigale exactly what it is. So let's get stuck in, shall we? Hey everybody, welcome to the Bahrain Formula One circuit. We are here to test the 2020 new and improved uh, Ducati Panigale V4S. Now this is the first revision really, uh, first major revision that the V4S has had. Uh, we actually rode the, the 2018 model, the very first V4S, uh, which you can check out above me right now if you want to refresh your memory on uh, on what that bike was like. Uh, yeah, so this one is all kind of, it, it's had a lot of updates, shall we say. It's not entirely new. Engine's still the same, um, but they've changed a few things with the engine mapping. They've also changed uh, the torque delivery in the first three gears, uh, just to make it a little bit easier. And that's a little bit easier to ride and that's mainly what uh, sort of the design brief I guess you could say for this new bike has been they wanted to make this bike a little bit sort of less intimidating I guess you know for a, for an average rider or just you know normal guys to jump on a V4S like those things whole ass and so to get on to get on that thing they're trying to open it up a little bit more to, to more riders around the world but you know they've also got you know, with this new bike they've got the V4R the Ducati V4R wings um, basically the same bodywork and the same half of the frame same front frame uh, same stiffness as the V4R so got a, got a whole bunch of little improvements uh, we're going to be talking to a bunch of people across the week uh, or sorry across the day uh, to give you guys a bit more of an insight into what's going on so yeah it's going to be a good day this is the Steed, uh, bike number four. Um, she's still pretty wet, so I don't know. We'll, we've got tie wheels, tie warmers on there at least, so uh, it should be good though. Uh, we'll go, we've got to figure out where the hell we're going first because it's a pretty challenging circuit, and the F1's kind of put a few bumps in there, so we need to figure out what's going on. But it's going to be sweet. Be ready around in ten minutes, okay? We're going to go all together. Bro. Right. You're fired, man. You're fired. No, you're fired. fired. Music to my ears, or black stuff to my ears, I don't know. Stack of Pirelli tires. Yeah, baby. It will, be, it will be nice to try a wet Pirelli on the superbike in, in these conditions. And, and plus, with the, the track being the Formula One track as well, the, the grip level should be pretty good actually in the wet. So it's going to be good to see how it's going to go. Okay, guys, I've got two of my, two of my favorite Ducati guys here. Over here, Julio Fabry. He's the like, marketing PR guy. PR main and PR manager. PR manager for Ducati. He's the ones that basically makes you guys want to buy these things because he does such amazing work. And over here is the man that's responsible. For developing us. This is uh, Alessandro Valia. He's probably the fastest test rider in the world, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, does an amazing job with the bikes. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot. What, tell me what you think. What's your favorite thing about the new bike? What do you like most about it? For sure, the confidence that gives you, and uh, uh, because it's a less demanding bike, and yeah. also the performance is still very high. Yeah, yeah, it's been uh, seems like a, ni a nice evolution versus like the it's not a completely new bike, just gradual improvements here and there. Yes, we work in different uh, macro areas, uh, so aerodynamic, chassis, suspension, engine, and controls. So little modifics in a lot of areas make a big difference at the end. And uh, so what's your plans this year? You're gonna you're gonna go out and do a little bit of racing as well, maybe back to China or something? Or? I would like, I would like because uh, my Panigale before is really really a high performance bike and yeah, yeah. we will see. The torque level of the engine will be set to medium because the rain tire have uh, enough grip on the high throttle and uh, uh, we will compensate uh, at uh, low speed with the uh, level of traction control on curve 7 or 8 because uh, these two curves are made for uh, rain tires. Um, so it, uh, it shows street but uh, the level is uh, okay for the rain condition 
Then uh, if the, the condition will move uh, to half and half, we will uh, switch uh, to the sport level, which also has a medium level of uh, control, but uh, uh, more free traction. If you want to change uh, from uh, the first to the second uh, level of DTC, such as 8 to 7, no problem, because it is uh, already also protected, uh, the, the profile number 6 uh, uh, is for uh, slick tires. So uh, pay attention by moving that because it uh, can be a little dangerous on this condition. A long time since I've ridden on rain tyres. I uh, certainly haven't ridden on rain tyres on a superbike in a long time. Alright. Alright, let's go. Something really nice about a Ducati V4. It revs up real fast. Oh man, I'm so gutted that this place is wet. What a spectacular looking circuit. Since I rode the last, since I last rode the, the V4, I uh, did a little bit, do a few laps on Willow Springs recently, and you look already, you can kind of feel that this thing turns a lot better than the old one did. Um, I mean, the main thing is like you know, you get these wings on the thing, and you get more downforce. You gotta love that, honestly. You get more downforce than the thing, and which means you don't have to use the electronics as hard. Yeah, it spins up so much freer. It's just, I mean, mind you, we're in seriously high levels of traction control here, and the throttle response is rather doughy at that speed. Braking stability is really good, like better than the old one. But it's hard because you're not you're not hammering the brakes, so you, it's all very yes slow. But also acceleration, like you get way less wheelie control. But mind you, like the, the levels are high as well, so it's hard to kind of judge. But yeah, just coming out onto the straight, like you like that's low revs in second year, and you're just going straight to maximum revs all the way, and it's not wheeling. The wheeling control's not cutting in. So, I mean, it's clearly working. I mean, you, I mean, I can't tell you whether it's like, oh, I feel the extra 30 kilometers goes <laughs> downforce, but like it's definitely doing something because the old bike would wheelie yeah, and, it will, and you'd yeah. keep getting the, the cut in. And so you'd keep yeah. losing power. And... Because uh, what you lose uh, in, um, okay, the wings put more pressure on the, on, on the front. So for sure, the bike is a bit less, uh, Agile in changing yeah. direction, but it's so quick in entering. Yeah. That at the end, you just need a bit of more force to start the well, it's better the changing. Overall, you get more stability. Yeah. Yeah. At the end, is everything is better. Yeah. You get better stability though. Like mid corner stability is better. Uh, it's just the, the first run, yeah. but uh, when you go outside from the three, the one the second, then the three is the really high. Yeah. You are pushing hard and then the truck goes up and then became flat. So when it became flat, the wheel start to, yeah. to lift with the wings, so it puts you down. With the older one, you could have problem on yeah. this way. Yeah. That yeah. Many people have also because of auto hot or this one, it starts yeah. and then stops it back here. Yes. Yeah, and then you get less electronic and intervention and yes. then you can keep the gas yeah. on. And that's for a normal rider, it's great because you don't have to think about how can I manage it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Anyway, 
initial impressions of the bike so far. Um, big improvement over the old one in terms of how the thing gets into a corner. So when you're you know, initially sort of tipping in, it's quite stable obviously because you have the winglets and the winglets are you know, obviously going to put more weight on the front end and allow you to just kind of load the front up that little bit more. But the big difference is once you're actually in the corner, especially in the fast corners or the fast as fast as we can go here, they do feel, it, it does feel a lot more solid, a lot more planted. We were very limited on the electronics on that on the first few sessions, mainly because of the weather, like they just didn't want us to, to really get into it. So, you know, we only ever had like the road setting in the throttle and the level two, I think we got out of it in terms of the wheeling control as well. So you had to kind of pull that back a little bit. Although on that last, I just did a camera run and uh, I had a go on the, on the fast one, on the 226 horsepower bike, which is now coming back into the pits. And uh, that's a lot nicer actually, you know, throttle response is more direct and really someone's gonna lighten it up. Um, and here it comes in now, but here we go. But yeah, it's a, it doesn't feel, I must say, it doesn't feel like it's remarkably different to the old bike. Uh, it just feels, you know, more rounded, I guess, is probably the best way to describe it. It just feels a lot more planted, a lot more stable. Um, you know, the brakes are the same, the engine's the same. Uh, having a bit of a problem with the quick shifter, although I've always had problems with quick shifters on Ducatis, because as soon as you, you gotta hit the gear and then get your foot out of the way. If you don't, you're gonna kill the ignition when you stick the gear wrong and headbutt the screen, which I did once. Not, not ideal. Anyway, time for some lunch, and uh, we'll go and talk to a few people. Uh, I'm starting to get chills, body chills, man. <laughs> my, nip my nipples are hard. <laughs> that bulging reserve, bro. <laughs> this is this is the finest in American motorcycle journalism, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So one of the first lads I want to introduce you to is Carlo here. Now, Carlo used to work for Ducati Course. He's then been moved over to the production side. Is that right? And now you now this is your baby. <laughs> yeah, you can say so. Yeah. All right. So I'd like to. There's been a lot of chassis changes with this bike. So can you just sort of show us what's what's been done? Yeah. Okay. For sure. Uh, on the setup side of the Ducati Panigale before 2020, we try to give to the rider a more uh, option and more confident feeling uh, collected from the tire. Uh, first of all, we ch as you can check uh, also on the bike, we changed the position mm -hmm. of the for front fork yep. by raising the, the um, four part of the bike by four millimeters. So yeah. the front side, the, the front side. Yeah. yeah, we changed also the spring rate, which was uh, a uh, slightly higher than that, yeah. and changes also the preload. Yeah. So we defined a new balance which give more confidence in hard braking, but also support in the middle of the corner. Yeah, the light yeah. spring, yeah. but uh, a little less preloaded, yeah. so in order to compensate position. Okay. Uh, also considering the back of the bike, uh, we changed the torque struts length yep. in order to uh, reposition the rear of the bike. Overall, the COG of the bike raised by 5 mils, so uh, we take the advantage of more uh, transfer load. Yep. And uh, this uh, can give to the rider the possibility to control uh, really in a really precise way with the brake lever, the position of the front end, yeah. uh, and drive the bike uh, precisely into the corner. Yeah. Uh, the uh, shortened torque struts uh, made uh, the rear a little higher, around uh, uh, 10 to 12 millimeters. Okay. And then we also made an intervention of the shock length, yeah. which is uh, high, uh, longer by two mils. Okay. And this also raises the back of the bike. Yeah. For sure, every rider can, uh, uh, let me say, adjust uh, the level because the shock length is uh, adjustable yeah. and uh, tune on his proper uh, riding style and also on the tire he will fit on the bike. Yeah. But the, tire, the bike uh, has been, is born with uh, Pirelli mm -hmm. and uh, this setup matches perfectly the Pirelli of this season. Yeah. Um, in the end, all these changes uh, introduced a new, a new balance also on the chain force angle, mm -hmm. which helps you a lot in the load transfer on the back by exiting the corner. Yeah. And so is uh, the, the new receipt. Yeah, okay. How much of that stuff has come from the learning that you guys had within the racing department? 
Well, uh, what we change is uh, mainly the method yeah. of uh, approaching the setup of the bike. And so both the method, both the data analysis helped us to find this new uh, equilibrium. Uh, for sure, if you bring the rider in the condition to run uh, in a um, very constant way also for Alessandro, uh, as more confidence into the road he guides you, mm -hmm. you as an engineer yeah. who follows him. Yeah. And uh, so all the things we changed uh, came passed through our analysis system mm -hmm. and uh, our confidence on data. Yeah, okay. It, it feels just it feels a little bit more compliant for me than the old bike. Um, I especially like just that initial sort of turn in feel. Like it just feels just a bit more smoother and yeah. a bit more predictable. Yeah. Um, and so with the the chassis as well. So we have the the V4R front frame as well. Yes. Yeah, yes. Right. The V4R front frame uh, with this uh, uh, tuned uh, kick on torsional yeah. stiffness and yeah. uh, lateral stiffness yeah. um, <coughs> reduces the stress you put on the front tire. Okay. And also increases the level of confidence because uh, in higher lean angle. Uh, introduces a sort of lateral suspension mm -hmm. that can help uh, to absorb the bumps. I mean, I suppose the end result for me that it just feels smoother to ride. It doesn't feel as maybe on edge as the last one. Yeah, felt. the transition is really smooth in yeah. every in every phase, going down to the apex and mm -hmm. coming up uh, from the straight. Yeah. Yes. What you feel mainly, and what uh, the feedback of our professional rider tell us, is that uh, the. Um, it depends mostly on the load rate okay. of, of the tire we put on. Because uh, before uh, the tuning was uh, uh, not that center maybe for uh, also for slip tires and uh, uh, you have a, a gain of a spring rate too much higher. Yeah, okay. In this condition you, are, you start with the initial force which is a little bit higher than before so more support and then the um, the load uh, grows more linear and more smoother along the stroke. Well, you also get with the lighter, lighter spring as well. You give the suspension a little bit more room to move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not wound up as much yes. as it was before. Yes. So, yeah. And also, we take for sure uh, the advantage of the aero package because we raise it a, a, a little the front, but not to lose anything in uh, high speed uh, in corner or maneuver yeah. because the. Um, that the advantage of the full aero package combination of uh, wings and uh, fairing gives you an extra load on the front yeah. and so help uh, yeah. when, when you... I love that new fairing, new fairing is yeah. great. I can actually tuck into this one, whereas before I was like, I had to almost sit it's up much out more of protective it. and yeah. also puts you in a more comfortable uh, situation to properly uh, think on uh, where you want to go and not think to save yeah. the... Uh, so we got at... at 300 kilometers an hour, was it 30 kilograms was it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 37. 37 kilograms, so yeah, 37 kilograms, I have to do the conversion into pounds for you. But yeah, 37 kilograms at 300 k an hour. I got 295 out of it down the straight, and it was just solid. It didn't move, it was great. It was a, it was a nice feeling. All right, man. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Now, Julio was just telling me that it requires maybe a touch more effort with the wings to make that initial part of the turn. But when you're in there, the bike is so much more stable and I think that's a, more than a fair trade-off. So, already, I mean, like, we're not going that fast, let's be honest here. Uh, um, you, you get more stability on that front end, you get more weight, so that as a result the tyre flattens out more and it pulls you in and sticks you onto the ground. So, you know, it's the exact thing of uh, anti-lift that the wings are supposed to do. Now, when you're coming onto the straight here, they're saying that, well, this here, yeah, on the straight here, you do about 30 kegs of downforce at 300 k an hour. Oh yeah. Got to get my lines right, man. Oh, 
Oh man, that's exhilarating. Ooh, so it's been a pretty wet, miserable and cold day. But look, we've had uh, five sessions now, I think. The guys have put the bikes on the, on the warmers and having a late afternoon snack, so I've got to give you guys a bit, in, bit of an impression on what I think. Uh, yeah, so as I saw with a lot of the tech stuff um, and having a bit of chat with some of the guys, the whole aim for this bike was effectively just to you know, enhance what they've already got, but also make the bike a little bit more accessible to you know, everyday riders, really. So they, you know, that slightly softer suspension, um, you know, they've also changed the torque settings in the first three gears, so you don't get quite as violent a hit uh, of the initial torque delivery. But look, all the, all the changes have just equated to an easier bike to ride, really. That's the, that's the best thing I can sort of say about it. Um, our sessions today, because it's been you know, very, very wet, uh, our sessions today have been pretty kind of neutered, I guess, in terms of what we've been allowed to play with and the kind of power that we've been able to get out of the bikes. Uh, we've been running in the street settings. Uh, hopefully, you know, maybe we might be able to get a little bit of a track session later where we might be able to take it back, a take the electronics back a bit and let the bike have its head a little bit more. But look, on that note, you know, the electronics are so much better than what they used to be in you know, a few generations ago. You know, the, the DTC is new for this year, the, the Ducati Traction Controller, it's a new algorithm for this year. Um, it's a very, very you know, subtle system. You know, and I, I like the old system, I thought the old system was pretty good. But you know, this new system is, it in itself is a very, very good system. We're running on level 7 initially and we knocked it down to level 5, which is not like that still gives you a little bit of uh, little, still gives you a bit of slip for when you get in the wet. Um, you know, wearing wet Pirelli tires and things like that. Um, but you know, the I'm not telling you anything you don't already know with the engine. The engine's a complete jet. It always has been. Uh, you know, 295, 296 k an hour down that front straight. It's it's a pretty good time. I gotta say, it's pretty fun. Um, yeah, braking stability is, is definitely improved with those wings. Um, you know, when you're hitting up around that 290 k an hour mark, you've got a lot of weight on that front end. You know, that equates to a lot of like just mashing the tyre in under brakes because as you shed the speed, obviously you're going to shed the downforce, but that initial like touch of the brakes, like it just helps that front tyre just, yeah, just spread out over the road and give you all that grip, give me that grip. Um, you know, conversely, when you're when you're under acceleration on the on the backside and you're getting on that gas and the thing way up in the rev range, the downforce is going up, keeps the front end down, and so you're basically trading. You're not getting as much wheelie control out of it, which is that's what you want. You're basically trading um, electronic grip for mechanical grip, and that's always the end result. That's always the end go end goal when you're talking uh, chassis dynamics. You want to make sure that the mechanical grip is as, as good as it can be. Um, yeah, these things are on sale now in uh, in the US. Um, you know, the US has done you know pretty well, I'd, I'd say, over the last few years in terms of uh, Ducati sales. Uh, Panigale Worldwide is now the highest selling sports bike uh, according to Ducati, so they've done very well out of that. Um, bit of a surprise, to be honest. I thought it would be. Uh, I always thought it's a good bike. I didn't realise it was the highest you know, highest thousand cc selling sports bike, but done a very good job. And look, this thing's just an improvement of the old bike. Bloody good fun, man. Um, you know, they are very special looking bikes. They're a great looking bike. Now they're real head turners. And even now with that extra, that bigger fairing that gives you a lot more room, uh, easier for a tall guy like me to be able to tuck in, um, much more sort of comfortable. Uh, I'd love to give, be able to give it a go on the road. Uh, we'll see how it feels, so it fits on the road. But the taller screen's gonna be much nicer for longer rides. Um, it's, you know, be nice to see how it's gonna play out on the road, but all in all, you know, a brilliant bike from Ducati. It always, always it already was a brilliant bike. Uh, they have just up the game that little bit more. So uh, happy days. We're going to go out and see if we can get one last session in. But uh, if you like this video, guys, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments below. Hit that subscribe button, and uh, you know you'll always make sure that uh, you're one of the first to see the new videos. But thanks again, guys, and we'll catch up with you soon. Cheers. See ya.